I'm John Marshall. I'm with uh, Grismer Tower and Automotive Service Centers. We have locations in, uh, throughout the state of Ohio. We were started in 1932. Um, I was asked to talk about how, this, uh, how we were being affected by e-commerce. What we're talking about here is a combination of parity and leveling the playing field. The uh, companies in our industry are um, seriously affected by the fact we have to collect uh, the sales tax. Competition in other states uh, do not. That keeps, that helps uh, reduce the growth potential for the uh, uh, businesses in our industry. Uh, money that is spent in the local businesses, that money stays in the area and stays in the state. It gets recycled. If that goes to another state, that's not helping the state of Ohio. That's not helping the uh, employment situation in the state of Ohio. And that forces the state to find other ways of uh, increasing their revenue to make up for the lost sales tax. It's starting to become a bigger and bigger effect on our business and it is going to have more effect we feel in the future so we're that's why we're pushing to try to uh, to level the, uh, the playing field now i'd like to <coughs> introduce um, mr siebert with us uh siebert jewelry Answer to both Siebert and Seibert, Jack Seibert, S-E-I-B-E-R-T. We have a jewelry store in Upper Arlington, outside of Columbus here. We've been in business since uh, 1979. And uh, years ago, there was no online competition. So everything, everything was a level playing field. But nowadays, it's a little bit different. Um, more and more people are going online to buy jewelry. And of course, being a smaller item, it's easier to, to deliver it, uh, to send it, to mail it. Uh, we're all for competition because that's what America's all about. But uh, this is really unfair. It's hard to keep up with online stores when they're not required or they don't collect sales tax. Uh, and as a jeweler, we're dealing with things that cost more than $3.45, at least most of the things that we sell. I mean, how are we supposed to compete with these online stores? <clears throat> I mean, their prices are significantly cheaper because they're not collecting sales tax. Uh, that's why this, this study's a shining light, and it's a requirement, I think, that everybody should very carefully consider. Thank you very much for your time today. Gordon? Jack, I'll ask you to stay up, John, and, and Jeff, you want to come back up? We're happy to answer any questions that you may have. <coughs> what do you think is the best solution to the issue that you brought about in this report? Uh, there's actually there was a bill introduced in Congress. Um, there's a bill introduced in Congress last week by Congressman Steve Womack from Arkansas um, that would take care of this issue, and we, we support that bill and believe that a federal solution is, is very important. There's no state solution to it. Uh, the 1992 U.S. Supreme Court case, the Quill case, talked about interstate commerce being regulated by uh, Congress. So ultimately, Congress is going to have to act. Wouldn't this be seen as a tax increase? Couldn't it be spun that way? And do you think Republicans who have control now in Congress would go for a tax increase? Well, if, if the fact is that we are not talking about an increase in tax rates. What we are talking about is a situation where there are some consumers who are paying a sales tax on everything that they buy, and some consumers who are not paying that even though they have an obligation to. So there is no, there's nobody who is not legally obligated to pay this sales tax. Right now in Ohio, if you're making online purchases, those purchasers, if you're buying something from, uh, from an online retailer in Texas, they don't have to collect the tax and remit it to Ohio. Your obligation as an online consumer is to, to declare that and to pay it when you pay your state income tax. That's not a very transparent system. That's not a very efficient system. And the people who benefit from that are the people who are more likely to make online purchases or who actually do make more online purchases. 
which will tend to be people who are more well-educated, younger, and higher income people. So uh, those are the people who are benefiting from the current system. Um, not benefiting in, a, in a, a legal way either, really, but benefiting because it's sort of like, you know, hey, if I'm, if I'm going down the, the highway at 70 miles an hour, I'm speeding, but there's no cops around to catch me. Um, you know, it's that kind of a thing that we have going on. How, how is a tire auto service center affected by online? I mean, most of your work is going to be done locally anyway, and I, I guess I've never ordered a tire through the internet, so... <clears throat> well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> True. Um, it's becoming a bigger and bigger uh, factor in our business. So not in the service part of it. You can't very well ship your car uh, to uh, uh, California and get it worked on and bring it back. But tires uh, is becoming a bigger and bigger part of our business. Uh, people buying them online and then bringing them in and uh, asking us to, uh, to mount them. Uh, they have uh, anywhere from a six and three quarter to a seven and a half percent uh, advantage. As the tires are getting more expensive, that's becoming a bigger and bigger factor. And you don't want to decline the business of mounting them because then that, of course, you lose that business as well. So I mean, you're going to go ahead and mount them. Well, of course, and uh, we don't want to. We're not in the business to. Uh, police that part of the of the, uh, of the collection system, but uh, uh, we uh, it does take away from the uh, if the tire is purchased from a business in Ohio, then the total total price of that tire the stays in the economy. If the tire is purchased from a uh, business outside of the state of Ohio, the only amount that stays in the economy of Ohio is the service related with it, such as uh, mounting it or balancing. Uh, and some of those things that you can buy, at times people are buying the entire wheel with it mounted and balanced, uh, so that whole value of that leaves the economy of, uh, of Ohio. Is this study saying that if online retailers in other states were forced to charge the sales tax that consumers would be more apt to shop locally is that because it seems that online retailers still may have a price com, com, more competitive prices if they don't have bricks and mortar they don't have the cost to go with it if they're just a warehouse someplace there is that there is there has some of the research that we that we built on showed that there are some people who make those purchase decisions in order to uh, in order to avoid the sales tax, and that may not be the only price advantage that they have. Um, so that's why the amount that we said, you know, that's not, that's not, doesn't represent all of the retail sales that people make online. It re represents only uh, a, a fraction, maybe, we're talking about maybe recovering 20% of it. So we're talking about a lot of money because because online retailing has been uh, has gone up from let's you know say uh, you know ten or fifteen years ago it might have been ten percent of of all purchases and and there are some indications that when we take everything into account it may be as much as twenty five percent now and and so you can see that even if if 20% of that is recovered, that still is a lot. And, and, and in working with, uh, with the people for doing this study, we didn't find that there was anybody who said, you know, we think that this is going to mean it's all going to come back. But on the other hand, for the state, it would mean that all of the tax revenue would be collected instead of only a portion of the tax revenue being collected. Would businesses consider this more red tape because they'd have to report who bought what and taxes? Well, it, it is, and probably 15 years ago, at the time that the Supreme Court ruled on a case, there were some reasonably good arguments that could be made. Right now, you can get an app for your iPhone that will tell you what, the, what in fact, is the sales tax that you owe everywhere. So it is, 
rel really very easy. It's really, relatively speaking, excuse me, relatively speaking, it's much easier now for an online business to determine what the sales tax is that is owed by a consumer. In fact, some online retailers at least have taken a small step toward transparency by, by telling people, we're not collecting this sales tax, but you should know that you owe this amount of sales tax based on the zip code that you, you say you, you live in. So, red tape, yes, it's part of the society that we live in and it's not a big burden. It certainly is a very doable thing for businesses to do now. It, I think most businesses would, would say, you probably said that collecting that sales tax is just part of the normal course of, of doing business, and you don't have any objection to collecting that for the state, right? Well, we have locations in several counties, and each county will have a different sales tax now. We certainly have the capability of collecting that, uh, and it is fairly easy. Yeah. So, does that answer that? Yeah, but it seems like you have to submit paperwork, right, to uh, the government to let them know, you know, you collected the sales tax at, uh, from this county and this county. And this. I mean, it, it's a lot of paperwork, right, or no? I, you know, I've, I've been told that some of the online retailers actually sell software to small businesses to calculate the sales tax and remit to the state. So what Jeff was mentioning <laughs> about an app for the iPhone or Android, it's very simple to buy software to have to take care of. How did you come up with this $600 million figure of expected uh, loss? The 600 uh, brick and mortar retailers projected right. to lose about $600 million a year. Well, you know, they could potentially recapture uh, that amount. And, and I will say that it's a part of the study that, that one of my colleagues worked on, on a bit more. Um, one of those other researchers uh, did some analysis looking you know people have we all answer surveys all the time and people say how important were these various considerations in making it, their purchases so I think in simple terms it's really a matter of the fact that people say you know yes I look at that it's very important to me I'm always trying to find the best deal I can people say you know I, I, I try to avoid paying the sales tax Yes, I may be obligated to do it, but if I can avoid it, that's what I do. So, so there's research out there about that. And for us, it was a matter of, of taking that and applying it. And, and there's a range within which, uh, you know, we looked at this and we, we said it probably could have been anywhere from 600 million up to 900 million or maybe even a billion dollars in taxes. But just recognizing the way that the economy works now, we decided to stay towards the the conservative end of that scale. Is that, reason, is that a reasonably good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you could, yeah, if you got some. Uh, this is uh, Ben Passy. Ben is another researcher at the Economic Hi. Center. Where the $600 million figure came from was we created an estimate of the taxable base in Ohio. We did that by repeating the, the methods from a University of Tennessee study uh, using the size of the economy of Ohio together with the growth of Ohio relative to the US. We then took that tax base figure and we multiplied it by a factor representing, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, so we, we took the tax differential, that, that ta we, we know how much ta in taxes Ohio can collect. So we have a differential from that tax base and we multiplied that by the tax rate to get the total amount of missing commerce. I think, let me, let, me, let me just add, you brought up something that I would forgotten about then, which is this, that we didn't only look at surveys, we actually looked at people's behavior. And we could observe differences in people's behavior. If you're in a state that charges zero sales tax, what percent of purchases go to online business? If you're in a state where you're paying 3%, what percent is going to online? If you're in a state where you're paying 6%, what percent goes to online? And if you're in a state that's paying 9%, what percent goes to online? So we were able to look at all of these, this actual consumer behavior and say, okay, so when there's no difference between the sales tax paid to online and paid to store retailers, what share of the business do we get? And when there is a 6% difference, what, what share do we get? So we were able to take that. Um, so, so we're basing it really on two sets of data. One is uh, surveying people and the other one is their actual behavior.